Beta sorority is when you keep a group of all female betas in the same tank. Now I'm sure you're gonna say, wait, you're crazy, beta fish are aggressive, they can't go in the same tank together. And yes, that's true about the males, but the females are slightly less aggressive, so you can have some success at keeping them together. Let's get into talking about how you can do that successfully. For tank sizes, I've heard a couple different things depending on who you ask and how experienced they are with keeping fish. I've heard people say 10 gallons is okay, I've heard people say 15 gallons. Most of the things I saw when I was researching this said minimum 20 gallon tank. And I think for a beginner trying their first beta sorority, a 20 gallon tank is a nice size to go with because it gives the girls in the tank enough room to kind of claim their own territory. It gives you enough space to add decor and plants, which we'll get into later. If a friend came to me tomorrow and said, what size tank do I use to start a beta sorority? I would 100% say 20 gallon tank, bare minimum, anything smaller than that, you're probably gonna run into problems. Um, and since this is more tailored to a beginner trying for the first time, again, 20 gallons. I think it gives you just enough wiggle room by not being too big of a tank so you can still keep it somewhere that's not going to take up too much room and you can still get the viewing pleasure out of watching your beta sorority. Now again when I was researching how to take care and set up a beta sorority and I was looking at the different ranges of fish for the bare minimum tank of 20 gallons some things said four was okay or five and then gave a maximum of 10 which I personally think is a little on the high side so for me the range that I would suggest for a 20 gallon beta sorority tank is a minimum of 5 and a maximum of 7 maybe 8 depending on the temperament of your fish because it gives you enough of a range that you can get the nice hierarchy formed between the different females so I think anything less than five, you're going to have problems with the girls finding that hierarchy and who's in charge and who's not. And I will full disclosure say when I started mine, I only went with four and I did have problems. And once I was within that range of five to eight, I did have eight because I ended up getting an extra one from the breeder. It did find its happy medium and the girls were getting along much better than when it was that lower number of four, which again is why I suggest five is the bare minimum I would put in a 20 gallon with seven or eight being the maximum. Temperature and pH are pretty much going to be the same for when you're keeping a beta. You're going to want to keep it around 77 to 80 Fahrenheit. Mine is set at 77, 78 depending on the ambient temperature which would be 25 degrees Celsius and for pH you're going to want to keep it around neutral. simple answer yes we're going to want lots and lots of plants honestly my tank is probably a little under planted you want a lot of plants so that you can break line of sight between your girls on the off chance they do decide to get aggressive towards each other uh, some simple staples which are easy to keep would be java fern you can put that on your wood or rock you got your anubiuses, which gives them nice leaves that they can rest on if they need to. Uh, you got different stem plants. I have two different varieties in my tank. I'm not going to try and pronounce them because I know I will screw it up. I also have dwarf hair grass that I'm hoping will carpet to give them some lower places they can hide. And the last thing that's always simple is mosses. You can get java moss that'll grow quick. You can get Christmas moss. You can get peacock moss. You can get a bunch of mosses you can stick on your trees or your woods and they'll just grow into a big plume and mine actually like to lay on them like it's a bed so lots and lots of plants some people say so you don't even see the back of the tank so like I said mine is a little understocked for plants for decor wise on top of the plants you're going to want things that give you plenty of places for the girls to hide so as you can see from the footage of my tank to the left side I have that big log which they can get in they can go around they can swim through so it gives them plenty of ways to break a line of sight I've got right next to it on the ground a smaller little cave log which again can help break a line of sight give them a spot they can go in and claim as their own the 
big tree has several holes that they can go in and swim through and it also again it does great at helping break a line of sight so you're going to want things that are like caves that they can get in or swim through so tunnels caves really anything that they can just help them break line of sight with each other because that is one of the best ways to curve the aggression is having it so they have a way to break that line of sight and give them a place that they can call their own and mark because there are territorial Okay, so dither fish were one thing I didn't see a lot when I was researching this. It could have just been that the sites I was looking at, the article writer didn't mention them, but they are key to the success of Vetus Rorty, I think. And the first person to tell me about them was Lisa from KT Tropicals, so thank you Lisa for this suggestion. So dither fish is basically just a fast, active moving fish that you put in a small school in your beta sorority and just acts as a distraction fish. That's just the main reason you want to dither fish. It just gets something else in the tank that helps break line of sight and keeps the girls distracted from picking on each other. And I think it's a wonderful thing to include in your sorority. Because again, before I had dither fish and I had a smaller school, that's when I ran into problems. I added dither fish, I increased the size of the school I had for the girls, and it got much much better and more stable. I would say that dither fish are a must have, which is another reason why the slightly bigger tank of 20 gallons is a better size for a beginner. For a few suggestions on what dither fish you could put with them, um, I would say your smaller tetras, so things like ember tetras, neon tetras, black neons, cardinal tetras even, and then your smaller rasboras. So I personally, in my tank, am using the emerald eye rasbora which don't get very big i think they max out at an inch and a quarter inch and a half and you could also use chili rasbora since they're also considered a smaller nano fish so anything really that can stay in that range of temperature 77 to 80 and a ph of around 70 and something that stays small i would say you don't want to go over like an inch and a half and you want to stick more with your schooling fish because they will be more active as a school than if you just had a bunch of random fish in the tank and it would distract from your beta fish which are the centerpiece of your sorority. Like with any fish project, you're going to want to have a backup plan, and even more so with a sorority, because we all know that fish each have their own personality. So some fish that could be peaceful for one person could completely terrorize someone else's tank. I had a group of Cory cats one time that completely ripped apart a Serpe Tetra, which Cory cats are supposed to be peaceful. So for backup plans, have extra tanks. Have something you could put a fish in if you just can't curb its aggression. You could have six peaceful fish and then just one of the girls is overly aggressive. So you need to have some way to deal with that. Whether it's a spare tank, whether you put it in a timeout, you grab it in the net and you leave it in the net for a half hour to an hour, or you rearrange your tank. You just need to have some type of backup plan on the off chance you can't curb one of the girl's aggressions, or just something unexpected happens that you weren't planning on. You don't want to lose all your betas, so having a backup plan just makes sense. These tanks are just not for beginner fish keepers. I would never suggest someone that's never kept a fish before to jump into a sorority because there's so many different components you have to juggle and if it doesn't work out it could be so demoralizing and it'll turn them off to keeping fish in the future. Granted I started mine after just having kept betas for a couple months but at least I have been fish keeping on and off for the last 20 years. So I at least knew the basics of keeping a tank and no one had to explain the nitrogen cycle to me or explain how to feed my fish or explain how to keep a planet tank. So it's just all these intricate details that are involved in these beta sororities that just makes them unfortunately not for beginners. For the last tip, it's pretty simple. Research, research, research. Do all the research you can. When you think you've done enough, go read another article. Go look at another blog post. Go watch another video. Don't just take one source and think of it as the only way it could be done. There are multiple different ways to do sororities. There are multiple different ways to do everything. So it helps if you have a 
wide variety of sources that you can compare and look at and see okay this is what these all said to do this one says something different this water looks like mine this water doesn't it just helps to have a large picture and a large source of information when you're doing any project especially a beta sorority because they are so finicky and so intricate and just a pain sometimes but if you do all your research and all of your homework and you compile it all, and you just take like an overall idea of what everyone has done, I'm sure you can have success keeping a beta sorority. Just some final thoughts and to wrap the video up, just remember all fish are different and what works for one person won't necessarily work for everyone. So look at what other people have done, use it as your baseline, and then as you get into it, you'll find what works for you. If having five fish in your 20 gallon is the perfect number for you and there's no aggression and there's no fighting amongst the betas, then that's what works for you. You just have to remember that every fish has its own unique personality and a one size fits all rule is not going to work for everyone. To recap everything I said in the video, personally I think a minimum tank size of 20 gallons is where you want to be. For temperature wise, again, 77, 78, I keep my tank, again that's 25 degrees Celsius. Lots and lots of plants and hiding places for your fish. You're also going to want to keep dither fish, things like ember tetras, emerald iris boras, neon tetras. You're going to want to remember to have a backup plan in case anything goes wrong, an extra tank, a way to curb aggression. You're going to want to know those things up front. You're going to want to, again, do lots and lots of research before you start a project like this. And again, remember that unfortunately, I would not recommend doing a beta sorority for a beginner fish keeper. And if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Please remember to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment. Tell me where I can improve, what you'd like to see next. If you didn't like the video, if you did like the video, really anything helps me out. I just want to thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.